What's happening, Wrestling Nation? Coach Kennelly coming to you here with another episode of Chop It Up with Coach. Just picked up GQ after school. He's been having good days. That's really pumped up. And uh, yeah, I'm here to do a US Open recap. It was a blast. Thank you to everyone that recommended the tournament for me, especially the Masters Division, jumping in there, lacing it up again, putting it on the line. It gave me feelings I haven't had since I've been about 18 years old. So that was really cool. Some of the ones that stuck out to me was definitely making the weight coming in that journey to the event. I'd always be eating good and like I see my coaches do, Geez, my beard's got a lot of those grays in there. I think a lot of them got added in on this trip. But that's what you get when you're in the master's division. So just having to diet, eat healthy, make the weight, get on the scale, and then the difference in going into that scale bullpen room was a lot different as an athlete than a coach. Because as an athlete, you're just uh, you're kind of going in, eyeballing people up, people are eyeballing you, uh, who are you, what weight are you going, where are you from type of deal. And afterwards, it's just the camaraderie that everybody gets that I really miss. Like, you had world-class athletes, Jaden Cox, you know, Jordan Burroughs. I got to tell them I'm fans of them. They asked me how I did. So those type of experiences, I'll never forget. Wrestling alongside, rubbing shoulders with Olympians, with greatness. Got to meet Gable Steveson. That was a giant highlight of the trip. Kamal Bay might have been the coolest person I met phenomenal wrestler even better person he let me hold his uh stop sign that was the first one i've ever touched in my own hand so thank you come on when i get some one of my own i'm gonna come back i'm gonna let you hold it and uh, when i get some kids as well it's gonna be a great feeling you got to let Jalen hold it talked about how they're gonna be teammates in the future Jalen made his debut at the senior level that was awesome i got to coach at the senior level how cool is that we got to pick up a win. We tech fall the guys, smashed them like 8-0, 10-0, something like that. Um, great action on the feet. We were really valid there. Good lifts on top. Jalen got some lifts. I got some gut wrenches. A lesson I learned, well, the guys that wrestle in the U.S. Open are serious, even in the Masters Division. They ain't just your, you know, local dudes coming in out to, uh, you know, throw on a single and scrap again. These were accomplished wrestlers with great careers that are still out there getting it on a lot of most of them all more credentialed than me on the mat and uh, greco-roman wise too i want to get really out of my comfort zone i'm a tall I'm six foot maybe six one i weighed in at 150 pounds so one of my nicknames in my first match they declared the stump versus the stick if you could do the mat that was the stick so i'm not uh necessarily built for Greco-Roman, but I did see some skinny guys holding it down. Benji Peak, uh, who was the who was the guy I seen in Greco? He was killing people. I don't know why it's slipping slipping away from me. It wasn't Tommy Gant. It was another black fellow, but uh, he was my favorite from the tournament. I blanking on his name. He was crushing people with cow catchers, so he just showed me a whole bunch of news, moves, and ways the lanky guys can make it going. So within the three weeks, I practiced hard ish <laughs> and uh, you know I got some scraps in and I was like I want to settle in on a couple really good moves on offense like you didn't get a kid to wrestle I hadn't wrestled in 20 years with a purpose 10 years ago I scrapped on the Mets UW Whitewater just to you know get it in as a coach and have some fun but I was folk style I have no interest in that anymore it's a young man's game so I got way out of my comfort zone into Greco-Roman, and I tell a lot of kids to do it. I've um, brought a lot of kids into Greco-Roman for their first time, so I never want to make somebody do something I wouldn't do. I've wrestled Greco-Roman. I remember at least being on one Illinois team duels when I took, I believe, I was third in the state, and they called me up because the state champ you know, got injured or didn't want to do it for freestyle Greco Team Illinois. I've never wrestled a match. And I was like, yeah, that'd be awesome. I'm, I'm with it. So I showed up and I got tech fault. I'm pretty sure every match, didn't know the rules. I remember my first match in freestyle. I shook hands, we rolled out of bounds and I got leg laced a bunch. I didn't know how the point scoring system worked and I was tech fault off the mat pretty quickly. So with three months of training, I said, how am I going to get myself ready for a Greco-Roman competition? How am I going to get myself ready for a match? What am I going to do to put some points on the board and get a W? So if I could go do it big, I would start with defense. And when I go in the, in, uh, the future and come back, 
I will start with my defense, which is the proper way to do it. But like you're gonna get a wrestler at wrestling, you know, local jamboree. They've never wrestled before. Teach them a takedown. Teach them some moves to score points and see where it gets them. Because if you teach them how to just stop everything, then they won't be able to score any points. So I went out and I had three good techniques. I had a mean head and arm. I had an arm spin, I guess four, and I had a body lock or an over under lateral. And I was confident in all of them. I was scoring points on them in the room when I was practicing. And I was practicing against good people, professional MMA athletes, other senior level Greco guys. I mean, there was no jabronis in there. And I was catching people slipping, which is a great thing I have really enjoyed about Greco Roman is the art of surprise. If you attack somebody on a surprise, it doesn't necessarily matter how strong, fast you are. If I can get you in the right angle and the right surprise, I'm taking you for a ride. So I was confident in my offense. First match, I came out, lights are a little big, it's Las Vegas, the city put me on sensory overload, it was awesome, I'd go back in a heartbeat, and I would do it all over again, so I, um, for some reason, coaching tip, you do need a coach, because when I was out there by myself, the simplest thing, when do you wrestle, is a match number, but I didn't look up my match numbers, I was looking up brackets, I was confused, I warmed up for like an hour, thought I was ready, and then I went, you know, I was doing other stuff, eating, going to the bathroom, bored, and I'm pretty sure I got, you know, right out of the bathroom onto the mat without a good warm up and just simple stuff that I could have done differently by looking at pay. It's my bout number. I'm 1,012, about, you know, 950. I should be getting loose. And uh, with, you know, 20 matches left, I'd be starting to get in go mode, concentrate. And just simple things I've been to a thousand tournaments at this point told it to a million people but as an athlete it completely slipped my mind and my coach was also another athlete Jalen he was wrestling the senior level so clearly he's making his debut I'm making my debut we're not concentrating on coaching at this moment we're there to support each other throw bricks and encourage but we're focused on athletes so my first match didn't get a proper warm-up went out there was mixing it up getting a good pummel guy caught me slipping while we were pummeling tossed me to my back got a nice four pointer and then i learned later on this day i do i did not learn how to stop a gut wrench so i got to my belly pretty easy because everybody didn't have any fear of getting pinned or anything like that but once i got to my stomach uh this gut wrenches man they were brutal they were hard they were like anything i haven't experienced before and you really don't get it until you're in there so i don't think i broke any ribs but I definitely came, you know, whatever that next level underneath them is because my ribs are still hurting. We're about today's Tuesday, so not not a week out yet. But you know, I breathe sneezing as take a sneeze. Oh man, it's it's tough. But yeah, so he took me. He got he put me out fairly fairly quick after a minute or two. And it was a good experience. I was like, wow, I didn't get tired. Didn't feel any, didn't get any pain at all. So next time I was just so upset. I was like, I didn't fire any of my attacks. I want to go out and score more, be more fortune favors. A brave is what I preach a lot. And I want to go out there and get after it. Because Jalen lost his, his first time. And all his moves were him trying moves that just didn't go well. And I was like, I would have loved a loss like that. With me trying moves that didn't go well. And instead of the other guy, you know, putting his will on me. So the next match I go out there, and I haven't seen many matches go a full uh, six minutes, four minutes, whatever division you're in. Most people are getting tech fall before the break or pinning. So I go out, I go hard, I'm head and arm in this guy, head and arm in this guy. I'm putting points up on the board. And most of the times I threw him, he got that one little reversal point. I need to learn how to sag my hips better finish. I could have stuck him and got out of here, but such is life. So I'm tossing this guy, then finally gets a reversal inbounds. He gets on top of me, and uh, he locks up a gut and just puts me out. So I think at that point during the break that I'm super tired. My lungs, I'm, oh, my lungs are so heavy, they're caving in. I'm telling Jalen, he's like, hey, you got to stand up. I'm like, I don't care if he knows I'm tired. I'm just exhausted at this point, which I didn't really know why. We're, you know, three, four minutes into a wrestling match, and I'm fatigued. But it was my ribs that were crunching in. I just didn't feel that before. And, you know, he put it on me. We hugged after the match. It was fun. I got to do all my goals. I made weight, towed the line, competed with enthusiasm, was grateful to be there, scored some points, and, you know, mixed it up, have, had fun. And that was all I wanted to do. Now I know I belong, even when, you know, people, no matter how their wrestling credentials are, it was great to see some masters were sponsored good to see some senior level stuff you see the u17s u23s everybody was coming in there hot 
So we had a great first trip to the U.S. Open. Uh, good first experience. Didn't necessarily leave with everything we want. Some people have like my dust on the wall, and I'm coming for that back. Got to watch one of my teammates, Max O, win in the freestyle division. So that was awesome for him. But just, yeah, get on that mat, mix it up. It was amazing. If you're able to do it, it was a great experience. Whether you go to just a practice, you go out to a local tournament, U.S. Open, it doesn't matter. Just putting it on there, it's going to mean everything. Nobody in my life didn't change at all. The students and people I coach all even respect me more. Family still loves me. Some people don't understand. Why do you do Greco's? Because I want to. Like, you didn't do good. I can learn. I'll be better. Same things I always tell my kids. I just, just it, was, it was not a failure. It was an attempt. So I'll be back. I'll be doing more. You ain't, you ain't seen the last of Coach Canelli. So these videos are still going to be coming out. I'm going to keep growing. I'll be transparent with my wins and my losses. Celebrate the wins and learn from the losses as lessons. So that little longer video. Gunner's upset about it. Gunner, you got anything to tell him? He's not verbal. So that's the most you're going to get out of him yet. But we're going to get him talking soon. That's right. I thank you for watching. As always, it's peace. Much love to you.